So Qualcomm is doing something really interesting this year. They're not just making one top chip, they're making two versions of their flagship Snapdragon 8 Gen 5. One is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 Elite, which is the super high-end one meant for the most expensive Android phones, and the other is a slightly toned down version, the regular Snapdragon 8 Gen 5. You could say it's the non-flagship flagship chip, it's like Qualcomm saying, hey, not every phone needs to be crazy expensive, but it should still feel premium. Now, here's the thing. Both of these chips are built using TSMC's new 3 nanometer process, specifically the N3P version. That's basically the third generation of TSMC's 3 nanometer technology. In simple terms, it's smaller, faster, and more power efficient. It's the same process used in the Elite version, so right off the bat, that's a really good sign. Even if it's not the full Elite version, it's still made using the same cutting-edge tech. And Qualcomm is also using their new custom Orion CPU cores, the same ones that made the Snapdragon 8 Elite so powerful. But here's where it gets interesting. This new chip comes in a 2 plus 6 configuration. That's two prime cores and six performance cores. The two prime cores are clocked at 3.8 gigahertz and the six performance cores at 3.32 gigahertz. That's the same layout as the Elite, but with lower speeds. So yeah, technically it's a bit slower, but the difference isn't massive. What that tells us is that this chip isn't designed to compete directly with the Elite, it's meant to sit right under it, a sort of sweet spot between top tier and mid-range. It could be perfect for what we call flagship killer phones, phones that offer almost the same power as a flagship, but at a much more reasonable price. Now, here's where things get a little messy. Qualcomm originally teased that this chip would come with a next-gen Adreno GPU, a stronger NPU, and a better AI-powered camera system. Sounds amazing, right? But according to the new leak, some of those upgrades might not actually be here. In fact, early tests are showing that the GPU might actually be a bit weaker compared to the Snapdragon 8 Elite. That's kind of a bummer because most of us expect a strong GPU for gaming and high-end performance. But here's the catch. Because the chip is built on a newer 3 nanometer process, it's expected to run cooler, draw less power, and stay efficient even under heavy use. So even if it's a bit slower on paper, it might still feel faster in daily use. You might not notice much difference when scrolling, watching videos, or gaming casually. And let's not forget, Qualcomm chips have always been more about balance. They want that mix of performance, efficiency, and AI smarts. So maybe this is Qualcomm's way of targeting users who want top performance, but also care about battery life and thermals. Now let's talk about phones. Some reports say that phone makers are already planning to use this new Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 chip. The first phone rumored to have it was the OnePlus A6, which was expected to launch globally as the OnePlus 15R. But here's the twist, OnePlus ended up choosing the Elite version instead. So the regular Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 hasn't made its official debut yet. However, we might see it soon in another phone, the Vivo S500 Pro. There's a strong rumor that Vivo could be the first brand to use this chip, and that phone might launch globally as the Vivo 300 FE. So Vivo could be the one to give us our first real-world look at this new Snapdragon. But wait, Qualcomm isn't stopping there. They've got even more chips in the pipeline. The company is apparently working on another version of the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, one that's going to be manufactured by Samsung instead of TSMC, using a 2 nanometer process. Yeah, that's next-gen stuff. This version is expected to launch around mid-2026, which sounds far away, but it shows just how far ahead Qualcomm is planning. And if that's not enough, work on the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 6 has already started. And guess what? TSMC will be making that one too. So Qualcomm's roadmap looks really packed right now. They've got multiple chips for different price ranges, different manufacturers, and different timelines. It's a lot to keep track of, but it also shows how competitive the chip market is getting. Here's how I see it. Qualcomm knows not every phone needs the absolute best. The regular Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 could be that perfect balance between performance and value. It could be a great fit for phones that cost less than flagships, but still give you that flagship experience. Great gaming, fast multitasking, smooth UI, and better power efficiency. But there's still that question mark about the GPU performance. If it's really weaker, gamers might not be happy. 
but if it manages heat better and lasts longer on battery, it might actually feel better to use overall. It's all about trade-offs. So yeah, this whole situation feels like a mixed bag. Some upgrades, some downgrades. But overall, I think Qualcomm's idea makes sense. They're trying to give brands and users more choices. Not everyone wants or needs the $1,000 flagship experience. And honestly, the way things are going, we might start seeing more phones in 2025 using this chip. Not just from Vivo or OnePlus, but maybe even Xiaomi, Realme, or iQ. If they can price those phones right, they could become the new go-to for people who want high-end performance without spending a fortune. Still, I've got to say, Qualcomm's naming system is getting pretty wild. We've got the 8 Gen 5 Elite, 8 Gen 5 Non-Elite, 8S Gen 4 Successor, and even a future 2 nanometer Elite variant. It's like they're running out of names. But hey, as long as the performance matches the hype, I'm all for it. So yeah, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 non-Elite might not sound as fancy as the Elite version, but if Qualcomm plays it right, this could be the chip that brings flagship-level performance to a lot more people. And honestly, that's a win for everyone. Because at the end of the day, not everyone wants the best. Sometimes we just want something that's fast, efficient, and doesn't burn a hole in our wallet. And that's exactly what this chip looks like it's aiming to deliver.